I'm Rob Port from SayAnythingBlog.com. I'm here with Senator Dwight Cook, who, uh, along with uh, Republican uh, legislative leadership, uh, House Majority Leader Al Carlson, uh, Senate Majority Leader Rich Wardner, announced some uh, legislation to reform the state's oil taxes. Uh, Senator Cook, tell us about what you announced today. Well, we uh, I dropped a bill in the hopper to... Uh to address the oil taxes in North Dakota, hopefully to bring some stability and predictability to this revenue stream. Uh, it's a rather uh, uh, complicated bill in a way. Uh, here's what we do. Uh, first off, there's a requirement in the bill that the oil industry withholds income tax from out-of-state folks who have royalties. And uh, that uh, that condition will increase the revenue to the state this biennium by about $4 million. Okay. 4.1 exactly. The second thing the bill does is deal with the stripper property issue. And this is probably uh, the priority that uh, drove the bill. We have this little thing out here called stripper properties uh, that are going to start getting pretty lucrative for the oil industry. Uh, they're uh, especially in the Bakken and the Three Forks. So this eliminates stripper properties in the Bakken and the Three Forks. That amounts to about an $83 million tax increase to the oil industry. And they aren't necessarily fond of that. So we then did some other things. Uh, we changed the threshold for when a well by itself becomes a stripper well. Uh, today the law is for the deepest wells, those over 10,000 feet below the surface, uh, as soon as they got to 30 barrels per day, they could receive stripper well status. Uh, we raised that to 45 barrels a day. So these these proposals, what I'm hearing a lot is that we're going after some of these things to, to increase the revenues that we're getting uh, from the industry from some of these areas. But I mean, the state's already awash in cash. What would you say to people who are wondering why we're raising taxes at a time when well, we've already got you know revenues flowing into the state that are far exceeding even even our our, our projections. Well, I, I guess maybe I should continue. I'm not quite done yet. Okay. Uh, uh, we also have we created another incentive uh, for the oil industry to uh, explore for oil, uh, drill for oil outside of the Three Forks and the Bakken. And right now, I think. Uh, as of last week, the numbers I've seen, we had 182 rigs drilling in North Dakota. 180 of them were in the Three Forks and the Bakken. Only two rigs were out. So we created an incentive, and it, this is the very same incentive that we created years ago to lure the oil industry into the Bakken. And what it does is it reduces the extraction tax by four percentage points. It reduces it from 6.5% to 2.5% on the first 18 months of production or the first 75,000 barrels of oil, whichever comes first. Uh, this incentive hopefully will uh, uh, spread this uh, activity out across the state. It will get them into some of these less productive uh, uh, formations uh, and uh, help develop that area so we're not completely dependent on Bakken and Three Forks wells. Uh, it will also give them about a $35 million tax incentive is what the fiscal note's going to look like. So that'll be a negative impact of $35 million to the state. Uh, all of these things that we just talked about going to affect July 1 of 2013. And with those incentives and with those changes in the tax law, it'll amount to about a $28 million tax increase on the oil industry for this biennium. Then the last thing the bill does is, and we Right now, it's set at January 1, 2017, for the rest of these to take effect. Uh, number one is the extraction tax will drop from 6.5% to 4.5%. That'll be a 2 percentage point reduction of the oil taxes. It will also eliminate all of these incentives that, incentives that we have, and there's 10 of them that uh, apply into the Bakken. Most of these incentives are triggered on the price of oil, falling below $53.20. Uh, if this happens, uh, and there are those of us who are concerned that it could, but if this happened, the, uh, the fiscal impact of the state of North Dakota could be over $2 billion in negative loss or lost tax revenue from the oil industry. 
So I think what you've seen through this is uh, a lot of give and take by uh, state policymakers, those of us that you were at the press conference that have signed on to this bill. Uh, we're given some. Uh, the oil industry is given some. Uh, our goal is the same, I think, for all of us, and that's to try to uh, just make this industry more stable, uh, more predictable, uh, so that the state can make some decent decisions on revenue forecasts, forecast, and the oil industry can make some long-term decisions on their investment into this state. Uh, we kind of work side by side. I can tell you they're, uh, uh, I don't think they're all singing kumbaya yet, Rob. Um, so we'll see where this bill ends up when it eventually goes to the governor. And I would predict that eventually something will go to the governor. The uh, you, you talk last session uh, a, a subject of, of much hot debate and and it was it was pushed by by of course our former governor uh, Ed Schaefer uh, to address the state's income tax to, to pin it at a consistent level um, because it, at, at times it can be variable based on on oil prices. Now this this doesn't ad address that specifically. Uh, are you talking the oil bill we had last session? Yes. You mentioned income tax. You talked. To, you I, mentioned I'm sorry. I meant I meant the oil extraction tax. I'm sorry. That's my mistake. Okay. Uh, ask your question again. I've got people standing all around. Me sure. I I, I I apologize. Uh, last last session we had the uh, the quote unquote fix the tax campaign uh, from yeah. former Governor Ed Schaefer. Uh, how does how does how does this you know reflect on that proposal from last session? Okay, it, it's pretty close. Uh, you say Ed Schaefer. I I visited you know, Carlson sitting up in front of the. Uh, Senate Tax Committee, because uh, he's the one who introduced the amendments to a bill. Uh, it had a lot to do with timing. Uh, you know, his amendments came to a House bill that was over in the Senate. Uh, we'd already had the hearing, so we would have ended up making a decision on that question without any hearing, any public debate. I think that caused some concern in the Senate. Uh, it was also getting towards the end of the session. We didn't have the time to really vet it and make sure that the policy was really, I think, the best policy. But the other thing regarding timing is we didn't know where the oil industry was yet. Two years ago, the rig count was still going up. Production was still going up. We didn't know just exactly what the boundaries of the Bakken were. Uh, now we do. We've seen the rig count go down. Uh, we've just seen our first month of production go down. Uh, we have defined the Bakken, I think. And so uh, we now know what this industry is. We were also told last session the main impetus of that bill was, of course, to fixed the strip, uh, stripper property exemption. Uh, we were told uh, that we had two years yet before we really had to do that. And so uh, timing uh, is the answer, I guess. Uh, now we're that two years is up, we got to fix it. So, but uh, we got a bill now that's going to go through the full process. So it'll have a hearing in the Senate uh, Tax Committee, the Senate Appropriations Committee, and then it'll go through two more hearings in the House. Uh, the public will have great opportunity to weigh in. The oil industry will have opportunity to weigh in, and hopefully, we will send a, a good bill for the state of North Dakota and the tax people of North tax for the people of North Dakota uh, onto the governor for his signature. All right, Senator Cook, thank you for your time. All right, thanks. Bye. -bye.